I am the last one. If you win, you'll be out of work. The most important thing was so that uh, it was the ability to get lip sync and character out of the face because it had to match to Sean Connery and the voice of Sean Connery and had to have the personality of Sean Connery. We needed to be able to control the face to a very precise degree. And with Dragonheart, it was like, okay, can we truly get this big, huge lizard to be believable? This is the actual background plate. Uh, you can see there's, of course, no dragon there, and she had to act to nothing, just to plain air. Uh, we gave her an eye line to look at, and she had to lean back as the dragon was going to move in. Uh, this is uh, just a stand-in wood plywood piece. With nothing there, there's no way for her to know where to look. Uh, so we put things like this in when we have large characters so the actors know what they're looking at. Okay, this is what the animator looks at all day long, the gray background with the wireframe. And this is just showing the overall body performance, what we'll call blocking in the animation. And here's the wireframe composited over the live action. You can see there's a little bit of shake here still. We're still fine-tuning the camera move. Here it is with all its textures and shadows and reflections. And that's the kind of detail that goes into making these two characters appear as if they're in the same sequence together. And this is what the audience gets to see. Well, you're not like a dragon at all. Well, how many dragons do you know? Well, you're the first. Hey, Gord. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you. How you been doing? <laughs> well, they were a lot of fun. I mean, I've always loved much music and city TV, so I mean, I always wanted to do these. We were doing a bunch of different broadcast IDs, and I thought, well, geez, you know, in my spare time, I'll just do some of these. It's your own expression. And the thing, I was working with Gord McWaters on this, and he uh, he said, just go just go wild. Just, just do anything crazy that you want and we'll take a look at it. So you do a quick little thumbnail storyboard, and, you sh and we showed it to him, and he's like, yeah, great, go for it. You have accessed Digicom's Corridor, our prototype for a virtual reality database. Enjoy the demonstration. What we need to do here at ILM was create a virtual reality space. And so the, all the background that you see, including these little uh, letters and this visor on him, were computer generated and I built uh, all of the stuff. We had to create a believable, like, could we produce vertigo with a computer? Could we make the character look like he's really in this computer generated? It had to look computer generated. It had to build on. It had to look too shiny and too pristine. 10 seconds to warp core breach. had to be bigger and huger than the series. The thing neat about this shot is it, it only existed inside the computer, and I built this so that it could blow up. And, and as we look at it, all those pieces that come flying out at us are all computer generated. Spoken! Well, the mask was cool because it was before everybody knew about Jim Carrey. And, uh, and Jim's face is so amazing what he can do with it. And we were able to take it and even go even wilder. So uh, it, it, was, it was a step away from what ILM usually does, which is very photorealistic, very legal characters, going into this like fantasy, wacky world, which every animator loves to get their hands on. So it was a lot of fun to work on. We got company! I think ILM's always pushed forward, and that's why I wanted to, to, to work there was because they were always doing the stuff that, how did they do that? How did, no one's ever seen, no one had ever seen the dinosaurs like they had in Jurassic. Nobody had seen furry creatures like they did in Jumanji. And nobody's seen a dragon talking before. And that's the kind of stuff that makes ILM, ILM. Well, thank you. Ronald, I would like to introduce you to uh, one of my havens of supposed creativity called the pit, where I've been for the last five years here at Industrial Light and Mashed Potatoes. There's a little Canadian ghetto down there. A lot of the software we used started in Canada. That made us Canadians have technologies the U.S. animators didn't have. So, yeah, there's mm, upwards of a third of the animators are Canadian. They... So, yeah, it's the time to be an animator. So anyone with animation talent should be, like, you know, okay. sending their resumes. Okay.